So today I'm going to be showing you a really neat edit that I thought turned out really well. Disclaimer, I took this photo. This is not another photographer's and I really hope that you enjoy this tutorial. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started. The first thing that I always like to do is go ahead and duplicate the background and you can do that by right clicking and hitting duplicate on the layer that you want to duplicate. And then use your preferred choice of tool for selection. I prefer the selection brush, but some people prefer the lasso tool. This is my personal preference, whatever you would like. Now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut out the subject from the rest of the image. Because when it comes to making your pictures look more professional, there's a way to make it look like your lens is a couple hundred, even about a thousand dollars more expensive than the one you used. And that is by showing depth of field on a radius that is far beyond the depth of field in your lens. So I've got a basic outline cut out. Just a quick tip. If at any point it's hard to see the lines, you can go ahead, you can go up to layer, adjustment layer, brightness and contrast adjustment, and make the image temporarily brighter to see your lines, and then delete that layer later. So I've got a basic outline, and I'm going to go ahead and hit refine. And it looks like I've got a pretty good image. And there are several different options to look at. Towards the end, I like to go to black and white so that we can see the edges and everything, but we'll do that later. So real quickly, to do this, you can make your brush a little bigger. So I'm just gonna go around the edges and catch all the little fibers that I can. And if and for any reason that your program decides that it wants to add something that shouldn't be there, for example, you can hit foreground and bring things into the foreground, or you can hit background and put them back into the background. And there's a pretty good auto detection program going on, but sometimes it makes mistakes and it's just good to know that you can fix them. All right, so I'm liking how it's looking. I'm gonna get his hair up here because that's very important that we don't lose it. You wanna try and get the most detail that you can some things will be lost later on, and you'll see what I mean in a few minutes. Alright, so here's a good example. It put a little bit of the red mask in his hair, and we don't want that. That's supposed to be in the foreground. So it's really easy just to erase mistakes. And now it looks pretty good, but I'm going to go into black and white to give me a better vision of what I'm seeing. And it looks like it did really well. I can go back into overlay. I don't really use anything else other than black and white and overlay. Maybe you will fix this here. And then I'll go back into black and white. See how it looks. Alright, I'm pretty satisfied with this. And make sure that when you go into black and white, it isn't too gray. Gray means that it's kind of in between. And in this upcoming part, it can really make things look a little bit blurry. So it's important to make sure that any gray in there is covered up. And what you can do is you can go into foreground, make sure that there's not a lot in there. It just helps. Because that means that the program just kind of made it a middle ground area. And you want to make sure that it's going to show up. So hit apply. And that should process it. And you might not be able to see the exact lines sometimes, but the marching ants are correctly displaying what you didn't refine. So what we're gonna do now, we're going to click this little button here and we're gonna mask this layer. And you see it attaches it right here. Then we're gonna go back to our background, hit duplicate, then go up to select, grow and shrink, and it varies depending on the quality of your photo. This is a, I believe it's a 24 megapixel photo. So I'm gonna hit 30 pixels, 30 is standard. You can probably get by with 30. And see how that grew. Now hit apply or else you'll lose it. <laughs> and go ahead and hit edit, 
in paint, which is a really nice tool. I like it a lot. All right, so it doesn't look like anything happened. However, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to your top layer here with, that had the mask clipped to it, and you're going to uncheck it to see that in paint has done its job and it makes your subject disappear. Now we're gonna hit deselect, that's very important. Otherwise, you'll only be affecting what's selected. And you wanna select this background layer here, go up to filters, blur, and then you're going to hit Gaussian blur. I'm not exactly sure how that's pronounced. Sometimes you'll use a different blur, but in this case, this is what we're using. And you can bring the depth of field to look much different. And I like it all the way up to 100. Sometimes it depends on the image. And if you click these buttons here, you can really see the difference in the picture. It's really cool. So yeah, we're gonna hit apply. And there you have got your depth of field sorted out. So congratulations, you've made it this far. So the next thing that we're gonna wanna do, I really wanna enhance the features here. It's a little bit darker than I would like it to be. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go up to layer, new adjustment layer, brightness and contrast. And we're just gonna adjust these as we like. I don't really think it needs very much more contrast, but I like it about there. And then what I would like to do, I'd like to go to, I really, I love his eyes. I would like to bring them out a little bit more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to vibrance adjustment. And since I only want to mess with the eyes, I'm just going to keep an eye on them, no pun intended, and see, get the eyes to where I want them. It doesn't matter if everything else is kind of too bright. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Now I'm gonna go up to layer and invert it. So it goes back to normal. Then you're gonna to go to your paintbrush, colors, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the white color and paint back that layer where we want it. Make his eyes brighter. go. Now another tip of the eyes that I like to do, I like to select the dodge tool, go in, make it a little bigger, and right around this little ring right here, like to add a touch of light. Now make sure that you have the mask selected here. Otherwise if you hit this you're not going to be editing anything except the background. So add a little ring around the eyes and that really brings them out. It makes them look almost mystical. See, that looks really good. But that one looks a little bit brighter because the light was hitting it differently, so I might just take my opacity down to, I don't know, around 70. Go down and even it out, and that looks really good to me. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do, I noticed that the dandelion looks a little bit blurrier than I would like. It's not as sharp as the rest of the image. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up to layer, it's new line filter layer. We could either do a clarity filter or we can go down to this blur tool, click the little drop down menu and then do the sharpen brush, which might be a little bit easier in this case instead of inverting a mask all over again. All right, so we're gonna zoom in here and you can kind of see a preview. It won't do a whole lot, but it's good just to have that amount of clarity if you can. And that looks a little better to me. So, the next thing that we want to do, I would like to add a tilt shift. And if we did it now, it would only be applied to one layer or the other and we'd have to do it twice. So I'm going to right click on the masked layer and hit merge down and it will merge with the background again. And that's really important. Now we're going to go to filters, back to blur and do a depth of field blur. And see, so you have your tilt shift here. Sometimes, this is on elliptical, which is the circular setting. Tilt shift is labeled as actually this weird linear kind of plane thing. So I would honestly prefer the elliptical in this case, because I want to bring the focus to 
his face because that's kind of the main idea. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make sure that his face is served. Anything in the first ring here is going to be completely unblurred and clear. And that's important to know. You can kind of adjust the way that this thing moves, I guess. It's very important. And I kind of want it a little bit smaller here because I want the edge of his, edges of his hair to go blurry. And then as you pull this little thing, you can see it start to blur. I don't want it near that much. But you can see how in the second part of the ring here it's gradually getting blurrier and by the third it's in a full blur. I think that looks good. So that kind of gives it a bit of a dreamy aspect. Very nice. Alright, so next I definitely want to add a little bit more motion to this photo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a PNG file and I'm going to put some little dandelion seeds floating through the wind right here. Here's the best way that I've found to add images into other images. And by the way, you can go to Google and just type in dandelionseeds.png to get this image, or you can just find your own, whatever you need. So what you're gonna do, you're going to go to File, Place, wait for that to come up. And wherever you have your document saved, you're just going to select it and hit open. And then click somewhere that you want to drop it and it'll appear in its own layer over here. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to place them where I would like them. Hmm. And you see how this adds motion to the picture. And that's very important to add motion. Hmm. I think that looks good. So as you can tell, the dandelion seeds do kind of look like they were just pasted into the picture. And what we want to do is we want to blend them so that they look a bit more realistic. So here's what we're going to do. As you can see, they're kind of in just a straight line, all in the same focus. That one's kind of cut off at the top because of the PNG file. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down back to my blur and sharpening tools. I'm going to hit blur brush and what we want to do is we want to pull some in and out of focus to make it look like they're really in the picture and that would make it more realistic because we all know that dandelion seeds don't just go in a straight line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and set my blur tool to the settings that I would like. I'm going to bring my hardness all the way down because I don't typically like to use it. And so I'm going to select about, I don't know, every other one. Maybe not. Blur them a tiny bit. Make them look like they're, especially that one, not all in focus and just this perfect straight line because we don't want that. And maybe blur some parts instead of others to make them look like they're tilted at different angles. And this is just a really neat way to make something appear as though it's really in the image. I'm liking that. Hmm. So that's already looking a little bit better. Now I notice that some of them are a little bit bright for the image, so what I'll do is I'll go to the burn tool. Make sure it's about in the mid-tones. I don't like a heavy flow in the burn tool, it just kind of burns everything. So I will go through and anywhere that it looks a little bit too dark, I mean too light, we'll tone it down just a little bit. But you see that the light is coming from this angle here, so we want it to hit it as though it's just kind of lighting some of them up a little bit, but some of them I feel like are a little bit bright. Maybe some areas that are bright with that one. Mm, looks a little too bright. Just a little bit of it here. Alright, I'm liking that. So, here's what we're gonna do next. To make them look even more like they are in the image, we're going to add some light because you see how the light is being cast from this angle here onto the boy. What we want to do is we want to make it look like light is also being cast on them, the same light. And this is a really cool tool in Affinity that I really like. We're going to go to layer, new live filter layer, then click lighting filter. And this is really interesting. Oh, I forgot to uh, select the layer. My apologies. 
So, unless, oh, there it is. So anyways, what we're going to do, see it only affects the dandelions because we only have that layer selected. We're gonna go to point and see how it'll light them up. Now ambient is the tool that will allow you to bring however much light was there before that's what ambient does. If I bring it up to 100%, it's just the natural amount of light that they had in the first place. So this is kind of, I like to think of it as a sun. There's lots of different settings. Diffuse kind of tones it down a little bit, makes it not so harsh. There's a lot of ways that you can do this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it in the same kind of direction as the sun was coming at the boy. And I'm going to bring the shininess up so it reaches it a little bit better, but not a whole lot. I like that. Inspector, you just gotta play around with it. And then the light color. It's kind of a golden light. So what we want to do is maybe go over here. I don't know that it would affect it that much, but golden light. See, it kind of hits them as if they're in the image now as if the sun were hitting them. So I'm gonna leave it like this. I think that's a pretty good setting. And you can see that if I invert this by hitting Command I, there is a slight difference, just enough to trick the eye. So what I'm going to do now, I would like to emphasize the light here and add sort of a glow. So I'm going to select this layer where we merge the layers. Now I'm going to layer, once again, new live filter layer lighting filter and I'm going to go to point once more and I'm gonna bring my ambience all the way up diffuse the lighting quite a bit there's kind of a glow and we want it to be the same color again so we're gonna go down here see that I want it to be a little bit more white because the sun isn't just straight yellow everywhere all right, and that looks very nice. See how it kind of makes that glowing edges effect that everybody really likes in a photo. And something that I always learned was to burn the edges a little bit to bring the focal point, just like the blurring that we did. Let me select that. Just like when we blurred it, to bring the focal point in on the subject. It brings a dramatic effect. And I like that very much. Thank you for tuning in to see this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, and I would really appreciate it if you left a like. Have a great day.